It's one of the reasons why Hollande is in a hurry. They're frightened of the next uh, Greek, Greek crisis. So in a situation where you've got those pressures from the far right, which are, of course, partly fueled by the problems of the Eurozone, continuing problems of the Eurozone, which aren't likely to be resolved, because to resolve them, you've got to either have um, massive uh, integration of a kind that's politically very difficult, or you've got to make the shift towards trans fiscal transfers from rich to poor, which has never been, never been possible for obvious domestic political, uh, political reasons. So that's why it seems to me it's going to remain kind of rather, uh, rather febrile. In terms of what our partners uh, say to us, what kind of deal they're prepared to uh, offer us, um, uh, this will be the kind of reverse of an accession negotiation. And if you're a country um, wanting to accede to the European uh, Union, it's very tough. I mean, basically, you have to, you have to sign up to, to uh, all the rules, and it's, it's, a very, it's, very hard, it's very hard pounding. And there will be different, there will be different uh, motivations. Um, I mean, the French and Germans clearly will be looking to see uh, what advantage they can get for Frankfurt and, uh, and Paris. Um, maybe they do have an interest in continuing to see the city of, uh, of, of London as a very important financial center. But, he, but, you know, but question mark, you know better than me. Do they? Or will uh, um, national advantage uh, prevail? In which case, we could find ourselves uh, not even uh, negotiating on a kind of Norway type deal with the one issue being, you know, do you actually have freedom of movement or, or, or don't you? And, and their, their view as of now would be you absolutely have to continue with freedom of movement to have that kind of deal. Or might they think to themselves, actually, we, of course it's in our interest to give the British uh, a free trade deal in terms of goods and to appoint in services, but as for financial services, not so much. And that's that, of course, not the not so much on free trade and financial services is, act, is of course, the core of what most EU free trade agreements are, uh, uh, are about. And that's why it seems to me the long-term, you know, the, the, the long-term, long uh, I don't say long-term, the next four or five years prospect is, is, is so worrying because we're not going to be entering a negotiation with a very clear position of what the outcome, I mean, if you, you know, if you're applying to join the European Union, at least you know what you've got to do. You know that's what you have, those are the conditions you've got to fulfill. We won't know, It'll, and, it, and it will probably keep changing uh, as the negotiations go along, partly because the domestic, the domestic politics, not just in our own country, but in, uh, uh, in other countries will, uh, uh, will change. Now, you know, it's conceivable that um, because of what happens here and because of the enormity of it, we, you know, we the British public, will conclude that actually even with free movement of, 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 of people, uh, we want back in and you'll have a government that uh, says, okay, we're going to stop this uh, process. But, you know, it was from Alistair's description of the domestic politics here, you know, we're, <laughs> you know that's, a, that's, a, that's a wish rather than an expectation.